Hi everyone, this is Tim Halverson with 7fold. In this quick tips episode, we're going to look at the relative item component in Grasshopper. If you don't know what that is, that's okay. Let's take a quick look at an example that I've already whipped up here on screen. And what we have here is a staircase that's being generated by a curve and some treads. If you want a more in-depth tutorial on how to make this exact stair, you can look at that in the link here. Uh, or check out the cards in the description. But specifically on this one, we're going to look at this relative item component. Now it's really powerful and I want to explain what's going on. So if I just click Control Alt and click this, you can see where it lives. It's in the tree branch um, management area. And what is happening here is we have um, each of these points is getting lofted up at a specific height based off of the riser. So if I just isolate, we've got those points that are going to represent our risers for the stair. And when I do this syntax for plus one in braces, it's going to allow me to get the, the one in the next branch. So here I've moved it up and, and then I've grafted it. And what that does is it switches it from a flat list here, just a flat list, over to all of these have their own branch. Now, what is going on is basically, let's flip this back. Okay, so what is going on here? We have this component here that is going to be grafting, creating each of these unique branches. And sorry, it's a little too fat. And as this goes from eight to nine to 10, that's incrementing by, by one. Now, that's basically all we need to do to input this panel here is put in the brackets, add a plus or a minus, and then a one or any number that you'd want to increment. So if I added plus two, that would skip from nine to 11, okay? And so what that's doing is it's taking each point that's on its own branch and then it's returning either the plus one or in this, you know, in this case, plus two, it would go over here. And, and then I now have these two components, these two points on their own branch. And so, so what I'm doing is I'm getting these two on their own branch. And then we're doing some things where we bring that point down to, to be on the plane to project that down. We're creating a line through that, and then we're doing some other operations. So uh, this helps us to get not only the orientation, so that in this case, the, the stair, as it rotates around, let me hide this for a second. You can see the stair is actually orienting along the curve, and that's being mapped to from this tread. You can see that visually with this vector, with the arrow there. And that's going to be relative to every single situation here. So every single branch. Okay. So um, if you keep this for wrapping paths to false, that's going to basically clip um, at the very end. So in this case, we've if I return A, A is going to give me the first point that I put in. So it's essentially a copy of what I put in right here. But B is going to be... Um, it's going to be the plus one item. And so to visualize that, we can, uh, we can build a line and you can see that right there. So here's the line that's connecting the, those two together. Now, if I wanted to, I could also go from the projected point back to what it was projected from. And you can see I was projecting that here. I could just continue to build up my stair by adding a line from the offset B to the projected point there. And now I'm getting that vertical line and we could continue to work with this. Um, if I was to do the plus two, for example, and project that down
and build a line. Sorry, let's do this one more time. There we go. So now we could merge not only the original point, the offset point, but we could also add in this projected point. And as we bring that together, we could build up a polyline and start to get some interesting relationships. So you can see here, and we're not going to close that. Oh, got it. So what we're doing is So if I just deconstruct this plane that we've been using, uh, I can use the Y in that case. Um, typing in amplitude with Y, we can do um, some number like six inches and put the direction for extrude. There we go. <clears throat> so what you're actually getting here is you're getting these longer steps. Now if I was to increase that to a plus three, right, so this is this is coming all the way out here, going up, coming all the way out here, going up. And it's kind of an interest, interesting pattern, I must say. So it's kind of a fun, fun tool to work with. And if you want to even make this a slider, you could do a concatenate. So you could put in um, all these items. So do a panel, do a little bracket. This is if you want to make it parametric. Um, just click, drag, hold alt to make a copy of the panel. Change that to a close bracket. And We'll also just make that, um, we'll do plus in here as well. And then we'll add in our increment. Okay, so if I put that in, the result as a preview is our plus one. And if I change that, it's going plus two, plus three. And I can put that into the offset. And now I have a variable system to build up that uh, support structure. And you can feel free to play around with this, but it's kind of fun. And then um, the biggest thing to note too is that this plus three is gonna be relative to the branches. So because um, the branch is just a flat branch, um, it doesn't have any extra steps in it. Like before we had this, um, let me just explain this quick. So, so because I simplified this to just the one branch level down here, that's why I was only able to use the plus one here. But if it was like this, you'd actually need to add that into your system. So you would need to add this um, in and then concatenate. So that would be input number one 
concatenate input input um, your variable plus uh, or minus and then input your uh, your integer slider right and so that component would then give you your um, parametric slider and then you'd have to add your curly bracket close as an input to concatenate and that would give you essentially this as a fixed uh, value and then you'd have a variable at the end so that that gives you the flexibility because if it's not just that at the end you could create variable um, offsets on any branch level uh, so as you get deeper into understanding what this relative item component can do you can start to create relationships across branches and do a lot of fun interweaving of all of that so anyway I hope this uh, quick tip was useful to you I'm really curious to see what you want to make with the relative item component and Let's just bake that out just to have some satisfaction. Cool. So what are you going to make with the relative item component? I would love to see. I'd love to hear uh, any questions you have. Leave them in the comments below. I would also love if you just posted some images um, and in future videos, we also are going to be building more quick tips like this all the time. So please let me know what you would like to see or know about more next. Um, but thanks again. This is Tim Halverson with Sevenfold and I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, go ahead and hit subscribe, like, and check out bimacademy.sevenfold.io. We're posting much more detailed comments uh, and tutorials over there. And I look forward to keep learning with you guys. All right. Have a wonderful day and I'll catch you later. See ya.